So my name is Erin Swendlin, and I am going to be doing a workshop for you today called Relatively Speaking. And what I'm going to do is talk mainly about uh, how we use relative strength and the different tools we can use, like the price relative tool uh, and various relative uh, price relative charts. Uh, I'm going to give Tom a little credit here when I get to some of the examples. So first of all, uh, some of the things I'm going to cover is, of course, what is relative strength? We'll look at some of the indicators and tools that you can use to measure and find relative strength. We recommend you go ahead and take the poll if you're watching live today, because I will look at that after our workshop to see which uh, tools you like to use. Price relative charts, I'm gonna show you how to do those chart settings. We're gonna look at performance charts and I'll also cover RRG. So first of all, what is relative strength? Well basically relative strength, you're comparing the performance of one security or index to another. So there are different ways that we can do that. And I'm going to show you a couple of them. What sometimes people get confused about is the, you know, we talk about internal strength uh, and we do talk about relative strength on a single chart. Uh, and so that can be a little bit confusing. So hopefully I'll be able to clear that up as we go along. So how are the different ways we can measure relative strength? Some of you may not be aware, but you can use the PMO, the PPO, and I'll talk a little bit about the one that's missing here. And you can use those, uh, they are on one chart, and each of them measure the internal strength of that particular security, but they also have the added benefit that uh, because they are uh, what I like to call normalized in that they take price into account, uh, but they're not subject to what the price level is between one security and another. So using the PMO and PPO, you can actually compare those readings from say an Amazon chart to a Ford Motor Company chart, even though the price differences are huge. It does not matter because of the way these indicators are structured. You can use them and compare their readings across other securities. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the stock charts technical rank, excellent tool. We'll talk a little bit more about how that is calculated and how we can use that on just one chart uh, to see how uh, what kind of relative strength our um, ETF or stocks have. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about using the price relative tool. And this is one of the settings that you can use in the workbench. Uh, I'll show you the, the various ways you can do that, uh, give you some samples. We'll look at perf charts is what we call them, performance charts. There's a couple of ways to, to use those. And then I will finish off uh, just showing you a little bit about relative rotation graphs. Uh, this is a lot of stuff to cover in half an hour. Uh, so I, I probably will be, you know, kind of brushing over a, a few of these. So just bear with me. All right. So uh, you saw on that chart probably that I did leave off the RSI. And so, uh, you know, what about the RSI? Why did you leave it off? Well, I just, there's a lot of confusion sometimes uh, because when we say relative strength index, um, when you have that actually on a chart, it's not an indication on that chart of the relative strength among other securities. It's an internal relative strength. Where is that particular security in regards to its price level? Uh, and is it overbought or, or oversold? So you're looking at the RSI, but it's just for that particular security. And you know, the PMO and PPO, when you have those on the chart, same deal. Um, they're really measuring what's going on with that particular security. But the benefit is, is that you can compare their readings like I was talking about previously. So you measure, the, you know, the RSI and honestly the PMO um, is very similar in that they measure internal strength and they do that by looking at the speed momentum of, you know, the changes in price movement. But they're not, uh, they're not bounded by uh, or unbounded um, by the, the fact, you know, you, you're you not taking that those price levels into comparison, remember, so you can compare um, securities that are way different in what their price values are. And so the RSI does that as well. Um, but like I, I said right here, it says doesn't compare security to security. On your chart, when you have an RSI reading, it's not taking into account any other security. 
So the relative strength index, uh, though it's called relative strength, it's not really relative strength among its peers necessarily. It's not comparing that, it's only doing its calculation on that one security. And as I said, the same does go for the PMO and the PPO. So here, here are a couple of the tools, and we're gonna go over a few of these. Uh, how to compare the PMO and PPO RSI readings. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, the scooter ranking within a universe, I'll show you how that works. The price relative settings that you can put on your chart are another tool that you can use. And then, like I said, we'll look at the perf charts and the various settings, and then I will cover the RRG. <clears throat> now, one of the ones I left off that also you may have uh, kind of question is the, the MACD. Why isn't the MACD on there? Well, the MACD is, you know, it actually, it's unbounded for one thing. And you can't compare it from security to security because, uh, because of that fact. And here's a really good example of one of the reasons you can't. So you can get all kinds of MACD readings that, I mean, we don't actually look at what the value is of the MACD. Uh, generally, we're mainly looking at what it's doing. But here's the problem. When you go to a daily MACD, now you know just from the upgrades, downgrades I just did, when I stretched out the uh, daily chart, you can see with the PMO, you can see a defined range that it typically moves in. Uh, but the MACD, because it isn't, um, because it is subject to the price level and uh, it's unbounded, basically, uh, when you go back in time, the readings kind of flatten out. So uh, it's a lot better to use uh, the PMO. The PPO works similarly. It just takes the MACD and, and makes it a percentage change, which is why you're able to compare the PPO uh, across securities as far as the relative strength goes. All right, so I wanna go show you a couple of examples. So let's go ahead and move over here. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how, um, you know, you can look at the RSI, PMO, PPO, and Scooter and compare these values to another chart. Uh, that's the beauty of this. Remember, you, you've got values here, but you can compare them. Uh, with the RSI, we're always looking at a particular range, and you can compare where this is uh, in its range to another security and where it is in its range. Is it overbought um, relatively to the other security or is it un, uh, um, oversold? Uh, it's, a, it's a good way to check between securities for that. Uh, PMO, you actually are gonna look at those readings and you're gonna compare them to the readings of the uh, other security. Uh, and I, like I said, I'll show you that a little bit. PPO is the same thing. You can compare the actual uh, readings from one chart to another. And then here's that scooter. And the scooter is comparing this security, General Electric, to all of the members in its universe. So this is a relative strength reading on your single chart. This is telling you what the relative strength is uh, in comparison to what's going on with all of the other uh, securities. You know, where does it rank from zero to 100? Uh, in comparison to the other securities that are in its uh, domain. Okay. Get my... All righty. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna look at another uh, example here, if I can get my mouse to work here. Nope, oh, I almost saw you. Eh, eh. Uh... Okay, and you can go to the chart school and you'll be able to find a lot of uh, what we're looking at here. Okay, so here's the general electric chart and we can see the values of the RSI and the PMO and the PPO. Uh, let's look at the same for Amazon. And you can tell, okay, GE is at $10.50. Amazon is in you know, the $1,600 range. So you know, normally you wouldn't really be able to compare those because of the price levels. It just doesn't make sense. But we can compare uh, the RSI in terms of, it's at 49.25. It's right in the middle of its overbought, oversold zone. And remember GE was near the top. 
we have the PMO is at 0.5. GEs was 6.13. So relatively speaking, uh, General Electric, as far as price momentum is concerned, is more healthy. You have the PPO uh, at 0 0.005, and then we can compare that uh, to the other one. You can see right back there uh, was 6. Point, uh, uh, six, oh, the, PM, uh, the PPO, 4.017. So you can see that, again, there's a difference in the internal strength uh, between the two. Uh, you can also look at the scooter, like I said, but we don't really compare it to uh, each other necessarily. We don't have to because it's already being compared among the universe of stocks that it is in. Okay, so let's look at... There's the RSI. You can see this in chart school. All right. And um, I also have the stock charts technical rank here. And this is what I mean by uh, relatively being able to, uh, to see the relative strength of a indicator using this or of a stock using the scooter rank, uh, the stock charts technical rank. And it's uh, the reason the way it's calculated is this way and you're gonna get a value. And then that value is compared with all of the stocks within its universe. So let's go down here. So here you have the large caps, you've got your scooters. Um, they, we make the, uh, the comparison to see what the values are. And then that can tell you uh, how it is com in comparison to the other large cap stocks. And, and that's how you can use that as well. So you can get that relative strength that way. All right, let us move on. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna show you is, I, I talked about how we can compare these to each other. One of the things that I like to do when I am doing, when I wanna compare the uh, PMO, because that's the one I use, uh, amongst a bunch of peers, uh, I can do it with a scan sort. And a lot of people may not be uh, aware that this exists. So I'm gonna take us to the member dashboard. And I'm just gonna take a predefined scan. So we'll come down here to predefined scans. And I'm just gonna pick one. Let's pick strong volume gainers. There are about 61 of those. So I'm going to call all those up. I'm going to save them into my scan dump, which is my transient uh, chart list. I never uh, plan on doing anything in there that I want to keep because I constantly am dumping uh, scan results into it. Uh, kind of a nice little thing to, to think about or use. So what I do to compare PMO values is I come up here and I move this into a candle glance view go. And I have the PMO on my candle glance, but what we're going to look at is how we can sort them by the PMO. Now I have to change my, I have a custom style, as you can see, the colors, the way I have my EMAs on it, uh, the length of time is six months. I have my own little candle glance that I like to use, my own custom style. Uh, you can do the same. All you have to do is set up what you would like your candle glance chart to look like on the workbench, and then you save that chart style as candle glance. And then every time you pull up your candle glance, you're gonna see the same style, your custom style. But in order to do sorts, we have to move into, we have to give it a, uh, we have to move out of a custom style. So I'm gonna go to the six months because that's what I usually look at for my candle glance charts. And now I'm gonna add an indicator to sort by. All right, now you can do MACD, like I said, but you know, there's, uh, you can't, I mean, there's no relative strength comparisons there with the readings. So you can do it with the PMO, the PPO, and the RSI. Those are the ones that I would recommend. The scooter line, you could do that as well if you wanted to sort by that, but I wanna sort by the PMO. So I've got that in here. It automatically uh, defaults to what our default is, and that's the one I like to use. I'm an intermediate term trader. That suits me. And now I want to sort it. 
And I'm going to do a, a descending because I want to have the strongest ones um, on the top. There we go. So now I've sorted it by the PMO. And now of those strong volume gainers, these are the most, uh, the ones that are um, relatively stronger than the others because they have very high PMO readings. And so you can see that uh, by doing this uh, sort, now you can look at the stronger candidates first. Uh, if you wanted to, maybe if you're bottom feeding, you could do the ascending version, show the, the worst PMO values. And maybe when you're in here, you would find something that might be interesting. Uh, for example, here's a PMO buy signal. Uh, it is at minus 21 as far as its PMO value goes, but yeah, it's just got a buy signal. It might be something to, to look at. Um, it's, it's in the $2 range, so I would stay away from that. But it's, I'm just showing you an example how you can find uh, the use relative strength uh, with the candle glance. And like I said, you can change it and we can make it the uh, RSI if we want, and we'll do it in descending. Let's find those strong ones first here. Of course, they're gonna be the very overbought ones. There you go, because they have the highest RSI readings. So now you have an idea of which stocks are more overbought than the others. And if we do it the other direction, now we can look at the ones that are more oversold based on their RSI. And you can tell because they're all, you've got the, your little red uh, mountains here on the bottom. So an, another way that you can do relative strength um, analysis using just the PMO, the RSI, or the PPO. And like I said, when you're looking at them individually on a chart, they're really telling you about what's going on with that particular stock. Uh, I use it, the PMO, as an internal strength. It tells me if internal strength is good based on the way it's oscillating and what it's doing. Uh, I think you could do the same with the, the uh, PPO. Uh, I would look for divergences. And you can see with the PPO, we have <clears throat> a little bit different here. We have uh, declining tops here, and we have flat to rising tops right in here. Uh, and, and you can see that that gives you a little different view of what's going on as far as what the price tops are doing if we're getting a confirmation or if we're getting uh, a negative, you know, a divergence, a negative divergence. So in this case, we were looking at a bullish confirmation because these price tops were rising. Over here, we have a negative divergence. So that's telling you that um, to expect downside movement. Well, we got some. Uh, this is another reason I just prefer the PMO. Uh, I think the divergences and, uh, tend to be a little bit more clear on them. I like the way they set up. In fact, as a quick little aside for us here, I will show you something. I think it was in our DP show from here. We compared, uh, Carl and I compared uh, some of these momentum oscillators and how they can be used. So I want to show you those charts because it's very, very interesting and gives you an idea of the differences uh, that can be um, figured out from um, just looking and comparing those indicators. Uh, that's not the one I want. Well, well, we'll look at a different one here. Might as well give you a little bonus here. I'm not finding what I want. All right, well, uh, the idea is that they do act differently the PMO, the PPO, uh, the MACD, uh, OBV even, accumulation distribution, they all have different uh, feels to them, I guess is what you can call it. Uh, and so they look, uh, they do different things. And so we look at the ones we like. Ah, here we go. That's the chart I wanted. All right, here we go. So you can see that they, they react differently. And one of the things that Carl had noted was, again, these divergences a lot of times uh, will be different. And, you know, you have to make those comparisons and decide which ones you like the best. And you can see also signals come in at different times based on which indicators you're using. And you can compare these across the board. So, for example, that's the SPIs, PPOs, and, and RSI, and all of 
that. So let's look at uh, XLP, for example. And you can see all of those as well on there. And we can make those comparisons between the two and, and look at the values of the PPO and the um, PMO, not the MACD, remember. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some price relative and then uh, I'll show you a little bit more there. So I wanted to show you how to add uh, price relative. So price relative is you're comparing the price directly with something else. And typically when you add it, I'll show you what happens. I'll take a little out for now. Let's get that one out. Price relative is right, price performance. Uh, it's going to uh, immediately do this for the S&P. Uh, but we usually, what we do is, and I know what Tom does also, is we use it as a price indicator. And then we can compare it with, you know, you can do industry groups, you can do uh, whatever you'd like. And you just put a colon between the two. Don't leave up autocorrect. So now we want to compare XLP. This doesn't have much to do. Well, let's go, let's do AMD. What am I thinking here? Wow, autocorrect, it's so wonderful. Well, let's skip ahead. I'm gonna show you Tom's relative chart because he knows how to use this uh, tool uh, to perfection, I would say. So when you use a price relative tool, you're, you're comparing um, one security to a benchmark. So in this case, when we're looking at AMD, we're comparing it to its industry group. We're comparing it to what's going on with the S&P. We're comparing the industry group to what's going on with the S&P. So we can look at how the price performance is going on here using the, the price relative tool. Now, everybody always wants to know how to set those up. And here you go. Now, if you want to get a copy of uh, this, the price relative uh, chart, typically Tom will do one or two in the, in the um, 10 and 10, and you can just copy it from there. But there's a couple of other ways to do this. And like I said, we, had, we did have the um, price performance here, a perf chart. So here we're comparing it again with the S&P using the, the perform price performance. What I like to do, and this is the where we're gonna go into perf charts. This is the best tool to use for performance charts. And here is where you would put in all of the things you want to compare it to. So let's just pick, I don't know, we'll pick a few uh, stock symbols that um, we're thinking about here just off of the top of my head here. Amazon, Facebook. All right, so now I've put all of these in here and it, starting at whatever date it is, it shows you the percentage change and you can see which one is performed better uh, as far as all of these. So steel, obviously the, the worst performer of both over this 200 day period. AMD, obviously the best over this particular 200 day period. But we can move it around and see in 2017 what happened. Now, you don't have to just look at this uh, like, like with the line charts, you can also do the up-down um, pairs with the histogram and you can compare them that way. And again, you can uh, compare the days and how long. Uh, so that is one way to do it. Another quick way to get a perf chart is clicking here. You want the perf chart of, uh, let's say Ford there you go, it'll bring you right in there and you can see that and, and go from there as far as uh, selecting and using a perf chart. All right, so I think those were the main ones. I'm gonna show you, we have RRG of course, that's Julius and RRG compares securities relatively and what their uh, headings are. I recommend you check out that. Uh, so those are the main ones. Let's go ahead and I wanna take you over to our final uh, look here. Okay. So here are the takeaways for you. 
Uh, remember that uh, relative strength is a comparison between one security and another. The relative strength index is just for that particular security when it is on the chart. You can compare the PMO PPO readings and the RSI readings among other stocks. The price relative settings, I showed you how to use that for specific benchmarks. Price performance charts, uh, they're good to measure among small groups. And then RRGs, you can use about 50 symbols to compare. So that's a way to, to do your comparisons uh, with a lot more. And that's all I had for my uh, Relatively Speaking workshop.